Hey, good morning, friends. Diana here. How are you doing this morning? Uh, I needed an extra cup of coffee this morning, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you can see the title below, raise prices, raise your prices, raise your service prices so that you can actually lose customers. I know, I know, I know. It sounds counterintuitive and why the heck would you want to lose customers, right? Everybody's talking about gaining customers, more customers, more this, more that. Truth of the matter is so many service providers have too many of the wrong types of customers. And, you know, I can't tell you how often I am talking to lawyers, accountants, maybe even financial advisors, all types of professionals, all types of really, really, really smart people and they have too many customers that is that overwhelm is created because they're trying to service too many customers and you know there's the old pareto principle right 20 percent of your customers equal 80 percent of your revenue maybe even your profit and i know this to be true time and time again i can go back to 2007 when I was working for a financial advisor and the first thing we did was an analysis of his customers. The best customers he had, the top customers, and they all had something in common, gave him 80% of his profits. And yet he was reluctant to go and find more just like them. Anyway, uh, let's talk about you. And how can you raise your prices? There are so many ways that you can raise your prices. And this week's whole theme, my blog, my podcast, everything is about raising prices because raising prices is a very complex, very complex uh, topic. And there are lots of things that get in the way of us raising our prices. So it could be that our it's our old money story. It could be that it's tied up with our own self-worth. Or we say, you know, the market just won't bear that. Well, I want to give you, I want to leave you with a couple of tips and a couple of action steps. The first thing is you have to decide whether you want to be, whatever your industry is, whether you want to be the Walmart or the Tiffany's. Now, Walmart and Tiffany's both sell jewelry. I've used this analogy many, many times. But, you know, do you want to be the Walmart that is hustling all the time for more customers, more customers, more customers at a low price point? And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But it's freaking hard work. And it means that you were always competing on price. Do you want to create a brand where your services are kind of like boutique, Tiffany's, and you only need a few really good customers to create the revenue and the profit that you want, right? So that's number one. Number two is you have probably a lot of customers that you are servicing that are onesies or twosies, they're pains in the you know what to deal with, they're your wrong customer. They are not adding significantly to your profit margin, right? Say yes in the comments below, right? Um, and so here's a couple of action steps. Number one, if you're pricing by the hour, stop, 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 stop. When you're pricing by the hour, then again, you become a commodity and you are basing everything on your hour, which means that there's only so many hours in a day, so many hours in a week, so many hours in a year, you've put a, a ceiling on it. And there's always going to be somebody who wants to undercut that price, that by the hour price. Instead, create programs, products, or services that you bundle together that have multi-faceted uh, components to them. And that's what I help my clients do. Even, even a lawyer, even a financial advisor can bundle services together and sell a program, product, 
or service. Okay, I've done it. It's possible. There are many examples out there. So that was, you know, number one, stop pricing by the hour. Number two, raise your prices at least 10%. Just do it. Just across the board, say October 1st, my prices are going to be 10% higher. What that means is 10% more to your bottom line, 10% more to your profit. Easy peasy. So it could be 10%, it could be 20%, it could be 30%. And I want to, the third, uh, it's just looking at my notes, the third action step could be that you standardize your pricing based on its value, not based on the time that you are spending with the person. It's, it's kind of like a music teacher, right? A music teacher, you're not paying that person by the hour for their hour of time. You're paying for all of the years of learning and practice and knowledge that they have gained. That's what adds to their value, right? So standardize your pricing based on value. And lastly, I just want to share an example. Um, and you can apply this no matter what type of business that you have, what type of service-based business that you have. Is, you know, my client, um, so he's in the financial services, actually an accountant, and he's so resistant to packaging his prices together, very resistant to standardizing. But here was the one thing that uh, he reported back to me. Once he got clear on his vision for where he wanted to take his practice, who he wanted to specialize, and he shared this with one of his customers, one of his best customers, the customer was so excited, so excited to realize this is the accountant that I want to be working with. And, you know, packaging, sharing your vision for what you want to become, who you want to service, who you want to specialize with, will make so much difference to your customer. They feel so special that they're willing to pay the extra services or the, they're willing to pay the extra money for the extra service. So raise your prices. You know, even if you sent out an email today saying, or the 1st of October saying, you know what? I haven't raised my prices in three years. The cost of everything has gone up. And I'm sorry, but inflation, we find it necessary to keep, to raise our prices. It's a logical reason to raise your prices, especially if you've been in business for any length of time. So raising your prices to lose some of those non-profitable, those pain in the ass customers is a good thing, is a good thing. Your business will benefit from it. So, you know, don't be afraid to raise your prices you can afford to lose some of those not so ideal clients and focus on getting more of the ideal clients. It's going to make life so much easier for you. It's going to build the profit in your business and it's going to bring you a lot more joy and a lot less overwhelm. So if you've been listening, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the time that you've spent with me. Don't forget, you can also go over and here we are. Uh, check out my new business freedom calculator. That's right, business freedom calculator. And you can find it at dianalidstone.com slash quiz. Why? It's going to help you discover the number one challenge that's holding your business back. And you're going to get a report that is going to give you 
particular action steps so you can move your business forward and let go of those challenges. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye for now.